Hello guys, let's talk about service classes in Laravel. Today in this video I will show you a practical example of one of the ways of structuring those services. Because if you ever try to offload the logic from controllers to somewhere else like services, probably the questions were like what should and should not be in the service and what if controller needs a few services, should it be grouped somehow, or what if one service should use another service inside. So you get the idea. Basically the overall question is how to structure service classes. And I will show you an example from a project called Sassy Kit, which I've been reviewing in a few videos already, and I will continue doing that. I just got the access to the code to review various parts of it and showcase it on YouTube. This is not a free project, it's not open source, it's sassykit.com, but I'm not affiliated with it, I don't get paid for these videos, I'm just trying to be unbiased journalist reviewing the code. Including in this video, I will both praise and criticize some parts of the code. Let's dive in. As you already saw on the screen, there's app services folder and there are files that are managers. So this is my first thing that I would question. Everything is a manager. And let's open that manager and see what's inside. It's announcement manager, but the namespace is app services and there's a function get announcement actually only one function in this class and basically what that function does is query the database for some data so it's a typical service class to offload the data from controller or wherever else so the suffix manager in this case is very debatable the word manager refers more often to a design pattern and inside of our course on laravel daily about design patterns we have a lesson about examples of manager pattern in Laravel core itself. So for example, there's mail manager, cache manager, and for example, also Laravel has auth manager that uses guards. And also, as I said, there's mail manager to manage different mailers, also drivers. So in terms of object oriented programming, manager pattern is much more complicated than this class. So I strongly disagree with that prefix but this is not the main problem. The main problem is inconsistency between namespace and suffix. Because imagine some new developer like myself joining the team, seeing announcement manager, and I would expect something much more complex. If I see the word manager, it kind of smells to me like a design pattern, and then I would spend extra time to understand what that manager manages and why it is in the service namespace. So I would rename all those managers to what they are, announcement service in this case. So this is my first kind of criticism in the naming. It's very important for especially bigger projects with more complex patterns. From now in this video, I will call all those classes services. Doesn't matter if they have manager as a suffix. So I will show you three examples how those services are used from simple to more complex. And this is a simple one, announcement manager with just one method. So basically the idea for those service classes for most of them is to offload some query with some logic from controller, from livewire component or from filament resource that project uses all of them. So for example, if we go find usages, there's only one usage in this case in the view component of announcement. This is Livewire and we have get announcement based on placement, which is front end or other place to show notification. In this case, it may be debatable whether it should be a service at all. If it's just one query and used only once, Maybe it could be inside of the same Livewire component, but one of the potential reasons to offload that to a service. It is also used in tests. So there's tests, feature, services, and this is the test, testing specifically that service behavior. So get announcement for front end, creating the announcement, calling the service, and then assert that it's not null and assert something equals. Similarly, announcement for user dashboard, get announcement only active, only when dates match. So basically various cases that use that service class. So this is quite a good example. If you have some query in your controller, 
you offload that to a service class and then to test its behavior you create tests that call that service class and assert the data in that case it's beneficial to have that service even if it has one method used only in one controller but if you have various cases with various parameters from that controller you can write tests feature tests for all of them speaking of tests that test the service another example this is a roadmap manager test that tests well roadmap manager class which is also a service and this is a feature test testing the behavior of the service but that service roadmap manager is also used in the controller and in the routes so there's another test file another set of feature tests called controller test so there's feature http controller test for the roadmap and there's also test feature services for roadmap service basically controller test works with routes so called route by names so it doesn't call the service class directly this is probably the purest form of feature test calling the feature by route and then asserting that it all went well in case of roadmap manager test it's more like a unit test in a way so we're testing a unit of roadmap service whether it works well but in this case the tests still touch the database and do operations like assert database has and the pure definition of unit tests are those that do not probably touch the database work with just the parameters and the return results so that's why this is also in the feature test but in a different folder and this is a great example of test coverage both from feature point and from service logic another example of service class which is used more often more widely is discount manager so for example if we click on the first method and go find usages we have 11 results so it is used in live wire components of checkout in three components then also in other services and yes in the tests so this is even better example or more typical example of a service if the logic of that service is reused in many places of your application and the final even more complex example of a service calculation manager i wanted to show you an example how services use other services this is the code of the constructor so whenever that calculation manager is created and called these are constructed automatically by property promotion of php 8 and then inside of some methods of that calculation manager we can see for example calculate plan totals it uses the method from plan manager then some other logic than discount manager then one internal method of the same calculation manager then one more time discount manager and building the dto for the total amount by the way dto will be another example in a separate video but so that you would understand totals dto is a class to structure the total amount with these specific properties but that's not the point what i wanted to show you is that services may use other services so for example we can find where that service method is used in subscription checkout controller there's this method convert local subscription checkout which uses quite a few services subscription manager then we go and find session manager and then down below we find our calculation manager with that method of calculate plan totals so this is how it looks in terms of hierarchy you call kind of the main service for the logic and inside it uses more services to calculate various parts of the total number pretty good example of hierarchy i would say now enough of the praising now let's criticize something i'm trying to do that kind of in a sandwich mode so good bad good bad parts again expressing just my personal opinion so I found an interesting kind of a bad practice in some of the service classes. So there's a subscription manager and let's take a look at the method called create and it returns subscription model. Cool. But look at the end of the first line. I will close the sidebar. We're trying to find the plan and the end is first or fail. This is an eloquent method which by default or fail returns 404 not found exception. This is the code in the Laravel core, first or fail. If it doesn't find the result, record not found exception is thrown. Then deeper in the core, in another place, in exception handler, it is transformed to not found HTTP exception, which in turn shows 404 page or returns JSON with 404 status code, if it's API. Now let's see if the controller handles that exception. 
And this is not a controller, this is filament resource, but you can treat it as controller, which calls subscription manager create with try catch, good practice because there may be exceptions. And in case of exception, it shows the notification of filament failed to create subscription. But look at what exception it catches. It's a custom exception, which actually exists in that method. Later, after that line, we do have that if cannot create subscription, then we throw an exception. So the controller or filament resource checks only for that exception, but doesn't check for first or fail not found exception, which means from user perspective, someone tries to create a subscription and the browser would show probably 404 not found error. Pretty bad practice from UX perspective. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I've missed something in other parts of the code of this project. Maybe it is handled somewhere. But my overall message is that service should not be responsible for the returns to the browser or to the API client. Service is kind of a black box that should return either some result like variable, eloquent model, or something like that or it should throw exceptions if something goes wrong. So one way to handle that is in the controller or in the resource, also catch the exception of not found. So there should be another catch block here. Alternatively, that service class may return something like false or null or some kind of status code of error, which you would handle manually in the controller, checking like if subscription is not returned, then show some error. So in this case, I would change that to question mark subscription, for example. And instead of first or fail, I would do just first. And then if not plan, return false. Or sorry, in this case, return null. Basically returning that there is no subscription. So this is another way if you don't want to use exceptions, you need to kind of agree with yourself or with your teammates what that method can return and how do you handle that in the controller. But to be honest, exceptions were created kind of for that specific reason. If you use Laravel as a package or whatever other package or your own service, if something goes wrong inside of that black box, it should throw an exception. If you don't have a lot of experience with exceptions and how to create them and how to catch them, I can recommend a course on Laravel Daily.com. It's a pretty quick one, 29 minutes read, and I will link that in the description below if you want to check that out. But generally, I will repeat the message that services should not be responsible for the output. Controllers should, well, control the output. It's even in the name of the word controller. So yeah, this is where I come at the end of this review of service classes in Sassy Kit with both good and bad parts. Generally, I agree this is a pretty good example of using service classes and reusing them all over application to offload the logic from controllers, mostly database queries, but as you saw, not only that, more internal logic on top. And the more I've been reading that code, diving into that, I got used to that pattern of how they are used. And this is probably one of the purest definition of design pattern. So design pattern doesn't only mean those fancy words like factory, adapter, singleton, and others. Whatever repeating pattern in your code base you use, it's already a design pattern. So as I said, the more I dove deeper into that code base, the more I got used to that pattern and it was easier and easier for me to navigate between classes, controllers, and back and forth, which is a good thing for any new developer entering the project. After all, the goal of any design pattern is to make the code maintainable. What do you think from what you saw on the screen and from my opinion, do you agree with what I said or would you have done something differently? As usual, let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.